Well, hello and welcome to Jonathan from the Heart. I'm Jonathan Asley of JonathanAsley.com and I'm so excited to be shooting this short video for you today. Our topic, emotionally available men. Where are they hiding? Where are they hiding? <laughs> are they hiding? Uh, really quickly, if you're new to my YouTube, oh, by the way, if you're new to my YouTube channel, um, these videos that I shoot on Saturday mornings are from my balcony. You're going to hear chirps and birds and, and seals barking because I, I live over the ocean uh, or I live over the marina. Uh, and this is actually very similar to the videos I shoot for my private group called Midlife Love Mastery. It's a VIP group. Check out the link below. This is where I shoot three videos a week for our members based on their questions in the group in our private forum. And we also have a once a month webinar where you can ask questions directly of me. So if you've been interested in asking me a question and you can't afford private coaching, check out the VIP group below. Okay, emotionally available men. Where are they hiding? Where are they hiding? Um, so, oh, by the way, the cup says, do all things with love. Do all things with love. And my t-shirt, the Fantastic Four. If you ever watch the Fantastic Four, please post a comment below. If you do all things with love, please post a comment below. Okay, emotionally available men, where are they hiding? So I want to share a story with you. Um, uh, three years ago, I did something called the Hoffman process. The Hoffman process. Now, the Hoffman process, here's the copy of the book the Hoffman process. It's an inner child workshop. I call it an inner child workshop where you heal your childhood wounds and traumas uh, with your parents, um, which basically when, when we're children, you know, we experience life through our lens and, and grownups don't know how to, ex to, how should I say this? don't understand how children are affected by almost the littlest of trauma as well as big traumas. And what happens is these little childhood wounds and traumas develop what is known as uh, negative patterns and limiting beliefs in our lives. Negative patterns and limiting beliefs in our lives. For example, I've shared the story of where a school teacher called me stupid in front of the classroom. Well, that defined me for a very long time in my life. So that was a childhood wound and trauma that I got a chance to heal at the Hoffman process. Um, but it still, to this day, even has a tiny tinge, but it doesn't have the same as it was before. Okay, I'm going off subject here. So I'm at the Hoffman process. It's a seven day immersion into healing your wounds. Great experience. Um, and what was interesting is you're not allowed to tell people who you are. What, I mean, your last name, you're not allowed to tell them what you do for a living until the last day. And there was 40 people in this group, half men, half women. And the last day I shared, uh, or the second to last day, I shared with the group what I did for a living. I'm a dating and relationship coach. And I mean, it was fascinating to me. How many people said to me, you know, it was weird. The way you talked, I thought you were a therapist. Anyway, so one of the, that evening after we all shared, uh, we were at the jacuzzi, uh, most of us were, and I literally had all the women surrounding me <laughs> because they wanted to talk to me uh, because of what I did for a living. And a lot of the guys were kind of a little pissed off. <laughs> but one of them came to me and said, Jonathan, when I got here, I scanned the room you know, of men, and I'll be candid with you, I was attracted to you and another guy. <laughs> Now this other guy looked like the Marlboro man. I mean, he was handsome, he was virile, he was you know, very alpha male looking. It was kind of ironic to find out he was a professor of microbiology at Stanford because he, looked, he had tattoos up and down his arms. Anyway, so she said to me, when I scanned the room, I was attracted to the both of you. After going through this experience and talking to every man here, she said, and there were 20 men, she goes, I would date every single one of these guys. I would date every one of these guys. I wouldn't have seen them for who they were until this experience. And that floored me. Um, not floored me it, 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 um, in, in a good way. Because what she said is, I saw each man's heart. I saw each man's heart. And ladies, I know I can be tough on guys. I'm tough on guys, you know, calling them out when they, you know, pull away, ghosts disappear, calling out bad behavior. I'm a big proponent of that. But I'm also a big proponent for men. I'm a big advocate for men because I believe most men are good guys. They're just bad daters. 
they're just bad daters. And most of the time they're struggling with childhood wounds and traumas or adult traumas and they haven't healed. It's one of the reasons why I'm such an advocate for my book, What the Heck is Self Love Anyway? You know, do me a favor, if you know a man, if you know, if you've gotten this book, do me a favor, please post a comment below, let me know if you did get my book, but buy a book for a man, for a man you know, just one man you know. Buy him this book as an invitation to begin a journey of personal development, self-help, and spiritual work, just like these other 20 men did. You know, one of my favorite coaches out there, well, you don't know this, so I'm going to share it with you. One of my favorite coaches out there is a woman by the name of uh, Alison Armstrong. Alison Armstrong has the PAX group, and she does a whole Understanding Men program. And she's written a great book called The Queen's Code, The Queen's Code. And why I'm talking to you about this book today is because she says, you know, stop kissing, prince, prince, stop kissing frogs, find your prince kind of thing. But the whole point is a shift in perspective, a shift in perspective the way we see people. Because this idea of where they're hiding, emotionally available men are everywhere, but most of the time they're just a little bit afraid to share their feelings. And, and so a place like the Hoffman was a safe place. And what I want to encourage you is you become that safe place for a man to share his feelings with you. You become that safe place. How do you become that safe place? You start reading these books, you start learning about yourself first, and then you lead by example. You lead by example because emotionally available men are everywhere. Most guys are good guys. Most guys are good guys. You know, um, Allison really is about shifting our perspective on men, and that's what I'm here to suggest to you. Because just like this woman scanned the room and saw it from a physical perspective, when she got to see their hearts, she shifted to the emotional side and she had a shift in perspective. And if you want to see, see more men, you have to shift your perspective. See more emotionally available men. All right, um, if, if this resonates with you and you'd like more of a personal touch, please check out the link to schedule a free discovery call. If you want to find access to the books, check out the link to all the books that I, it's called Jonathan Recommends. I've got a podcast, I've got my own book. I hope this provided value for you. I'm gonna wrap up this video as I always do. First off, giving myself a big gigantic Jonathan Bear hug of self-love. I'm gonna reach into the camera and give you a hug of love if that's okay. I'm gonna ask you to turn to someone and give them a hug of love because hugs are a great source of love and we can all use more love in our lives. Thanks so much, bye-bye now.